Welcome to the Church of the Holy Family for our celebration of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. The intention for this Mass is for Don Mishkowski and deceased Mishkowski and Habish families. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, number 37, Holy, 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 number 37. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May O Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceases ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The second reading is a reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold. He is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. We have a saying in the seminary, uh, especially within our uh, academic classes, that clarity is charity. Or another way, clarity is kindness. And we say this in relation to you know, when we are in cause of distress or anxiety or fear about something that is unknown to us. So... <laughs> For example, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Finding Nemo, uh, there's a scene where the two main characters, Dory and Marlin, are trapped in a whale's mouth. And supposedly Dory speaks whale. Uh, the whale makes a noise. Marlin's freaking out because they're trapped inside this whale. And Dory says, either he wants us to go to the back of his throat or he wants a root beer float. To which Marlin rightly responds with fear, anxiety, uh, and greater stress, greater uncertainty. Or we can imagine it going to the hospital to visit a doctor and we have a certain pain within our gut, for example. If the doctor is unclear or not sure what it is, that only causes us to freak out a little more start to worry a little bit more. But if the doctor gives us a clear diagnosis, a clear directive as to what may be causing the pain, we're put at ease. So this is what uh, we mean when we study philosophy and theology that clarity is charity, because it gives us knowledge of things that tend to remain unknown to us. And in the gospel today, there's a very interesting dialogue going on between Pontius Pilate and Jesus Christ. As you know, Jesus is handed over to him by the Jews. And Pilate, in the background of this, by his questions, has been hearing that Jesus is a king of sorts. To him, it sounds like a king who's here to conquer the Roman Empire. A king that's here to cause mutiny which is why he asks him, are you the king of the Jews? So Pilate is, in a sense, very uncertain. He's very worried and concerned and wants clarity. He wants the truth of the situation. And Jesus responds to him in a very clear way. He says, my kingdom does not belong to this world. A more accurate translation from the, the Latin and the Greek is, my kingdom is not of this world. Because if Jesus said, my kingdom is of this world, then he explains, his attendants would be fighting. He would have an army 
trying to save him from being arrested. But he says, my kingdom is not of this world. And so Pilate relaxes a little bit. Pilate is given a little bit of clarity. For us, though, what does this mean? If Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, and we want to be members of that kingdom, do we need to be apart from this world? Do we need to be separated from it? But notice again, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. He doesn't say that my kingdom is not in this world. In fact, his kingdom is in the world. And there are two ways in which our Lord's kingdom is here. First, in the church, in her institution, but second, in us, by our baptism. And so, like Pilate, when thinking of Christ as king, I might cause anxiety. We might think to ourselves, if I allow Christ to rule, he's going to take away what I love. He's going to take away the good that I'm doing. He's going to make me do something contrary to what I'm used to. But like Pilate, Jesus reminds us, I'm not here to conquer what is good, but I'm here to conquer what is evil. And that's why at the end of the gospel, he says, everyone who listens to the truth hears my voice. And so Christ as king isn't here to destroy the good that exists, our work, our family and friends, sports, entertainment, rest, relaxation, food. He's not here to take that away from us. But he's here to set us in order. He's here to give us truth. He's here to conquer what is not true, namely sin. So there's no need for us to fear Christ. There's no need for us to be afraid of allowing him to be the king of our heart. Because if he's the king of our heart, he's going to uproot what is evil in us. But he's going to restore, reaffirm, and elevate what is already good. I remember in high school, I had the same fear. And I was confronted with the reality of, if the church is correct, does this mean I have to give up you know, my love of basketball? And I immediately found out that that was a lie. It was a lie to set me up to resist the presence of Christ in my life, in the church. But rather, I was able to see my love of basketball, for example, in a new light. That there is a, a true way, a good way, to play sports, for example. In like manner, there's a true and right way to live, to work, to rest. And Christ is here to affirm that, to give that back to us. For Christ to be king is none other than conquering and taking back what was lost at the fall. Christ is here to restore the goodness that we all seek. His kingdom may not be of this world, but his kingdom surely is in the world. And it's here to bring back the fullness of joy. So be not afraid. Be not afraid to accept Christ to accept his kingdom as found in the church, to root up the evil in our lives, and to set us rightly on the way of truth. Because whoever is of the truth is of his kingdom. And it is in his kingdom where true love, true joy, and true peace reside.
I believe in, in one, one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light, light from light, true God, God from true God, God begotten, God, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him, him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the giver of life, who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the, the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the Lord's love for us, let us turn to him with our petitions. <clears throat> that all nations would come to worship Christ, the King of the universe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that world leaders will see their power as a sharing in the authority of God and reflect it in the way they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the culture of life pro proclaimed by Christ the King will reign in every heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those suffering from slavery to sin, that Christ the King will liberate them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the success of the diocesan ministry's appeal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For victims of tyranny, persecution, oppression, or racism, that the justice of Christ the King will rid the world of every trace of hatred, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. During the month of November, we pray in a special way for all of our beloved dead and for all of the souls in purgatory, that they may enter eternal life with all of the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, please hear these our petitions and answer them if they be in accordance with your will, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the preparation of the gifts, please join in singing number 23, By All Your Saints Still Striving. <laughs>
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, <coughs> always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. And making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cassaginus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion, the memorial, the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with the serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of our high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Let me say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 39, God We Praise You, number 39.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who live and reigns forever and ever. I have to apologize, I forgot to introduce the deacon. This is Deacon Zachary Schaefbauer. He's from the Diocese of Sioux Falls. He is our teaching parish seminarian, which means that throughout the rest of this year, he'll be coming to our AFC once a month, uh, attending certain uh, masses that he's available to, and uh, gaining experience before he's ordained a priest this May down in the Diocese of Sioux Falls. So thank you, Deacon, uh, for being with us. Our CCW craft toy and bake sale is still going on in the church lower level, and they will also be open tomorrow before and after Mass. The AFC Mission Group will be serving a soup and sandwich meal after Mass tonight and tomorrow. They will be serving, excuse me, tonight, and tomorrow they will be serving coffee and rolls after Mass. Please come and support these ministries. Please join us for Mass on Thanksgiving Day at 8 a.m., Please note that the parish offices will be closed on Friday, November 26. This weekend will be a double bulletin, so please make sure that you keep the bulletin. There are copies of the Word Among Us in the back of church. There are enough copies for each household. Please take one on your way out of church today. This is a great resource to use during Advent to prepare ourselves for Christmas. We will be celebrating the end of the year of St. Joseph as an area faith community with 24 hours of adoration here at Holy Family two weekends from now, starting with Mass on Friday, December 3 at 6.30 p.m., followed by adoration until the 4 p.m. Mass on Saturday evening. There will be an online sign-up available, so please consider signing up as a family for an hour of adoration that weekend either during the day on Saturday or during the night. Also, please note that there will be a special morning of recollection for men, including a talk on St. Joseph by Father Matt, and Mass and an opportunity for confession. Let's make this a real celebration for the end of the year of St. Joseph. There will be an online sign-up available, so please check the bulletin for the other events that are happening and how to sign up for an hour of adoration. Please pray for all those in our area faith community who have passed away this week, including Roger Lotka of Holy Family. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Now let us say our prayer for a new bishop. Almighty God, who by the Holy Spirit moves the hearts of your people, direct the counsels of those who are appointed to choose a bishop for the Diocese of Nuam, that we may be given a pastor who in faithfulness and wisdom shall lead your way in the way of holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fourth Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song, number 22, Holy God, we praise thy name, number 22.